Good morning. What a beautiful day it is here in Eastern North Carolina on this uh, Mother's Day morning. We're so privileged to come to you today. Uh, even by this means, we uh, are privileged to come to you and really looking forward to time when we can uh, be together again. Hopefully, hopefully and prayerfully this morning, maybe the 24th uh, is maybe a target date for us to be back in the church together, but stay tuned on the website and also the face page uh, uh, and for further instructions on it. Um, uh, just keep in prayer that the Lord will uh, make it possible for us to be together uh, once again uh, in this sanctuary. I want to say thank you again this morning for the continual connectivity that uh, you're doing in so many different ways. So we appreciate that. Uh, all the calls, the prayers, uh, the support, your faithfulness uh, in your tithing, your giving, your uh, obedience unto the Lord and returning the times. We are so thankful for you this morning and in that uh, way, you, your prayers, and your support that means so much to us. And we love you and we appreciate you so very much. Uh, uh, I can promise you this, when we do get back together, there is going to be one big celebration that we are going to enjoy together and i'm so looking for that one uh, and for that moment but let's for this moment uh, i believe the lord has a message for us today uh, a mother's day message and i really want to speak to the hearts of our mothers and our families this morning uh, there was ever a time uh, our mothers needs encouragement uh, uh, it's today they're playing school teacher, playing doctor, playing uh, a lot of different roles as they're keeping uh, their children at home and uh, are going through a lot of uh, different uh, uh, things that they have never had to go through before. And so at this point, I really want to deliver a message today of encouragement to our mothers. Uh, so would you look to the Word of God with me this morning? Uh, we're going to turn to Psalms 127, verse 3, uh, just a portion of this morning out of that chapter. It says, Children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. I, I believe that this morning, and I believe I can show it to you through the Word today as we begin to share this message. Let's bow our hearts together and ask the Lord to help us uh, in delivering this message. Father, we're so privileged today, so honored to have those that are tuned in this morning uh, to be with us in this message, uh, a method, uh, a method, uh, a message on mothers this morning. Uh, uh, that, Lord, no greater uh, job in the world, no greater career, no greater occupation. Uh, than that of motherhood this morning. Uh, we are so thankful, appreciative of all of our mothers today. Uh, they uh, are in the depths of our heart, uh, uh, whether they're here with us or whether they're passed on, uh, the memory of them are rich today. Now I'm asking, Lord, would you just reach down this morning uh, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to uh, touch our hearts uh, with a word from your book today. Uh, uh, the word that is forever true. And we ask it this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. I want to deal with the subject this morning of mother's heritage. Uh, just let me say one more time this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, uh, our grandmothers, our moms, our stepmoms, uh, our mother-in-laws, our uh, godmothers, uh, soccer moms, uh, the mothers against drunk drivers, uh, all the mothers this morning, uh, we want you to know we love you, appreciate you, and so uh, grateful for what you do. You are absolutely awesome. Your worth this morning cannot be measured. Uh, there is no way to calculate this morning uh, your undeniable, incredible, indispensable value uh, to this world because there is no way to replace you. Mother's Day is a big deal. I hope you have the very best Mother's Day that is possible this morning. I, I hope that your family is treating you well and have 
many things to plan for you. You deserve all the recognition, uh, all the response, all the rewards uh, that they could possibly give you this morning. You're worthy of that. Uh, uh, I hope you are loved and appreciated uh, for all that you do because without you, uh, our world this morning would be in one big mess. Uh, you're the glue that kind of holds uh, uh, things together, that keeps life, uh, family, and society together this morning. Our text does not address the sacrifice that you make every day as the director of operations of your household. But it does mention the results of your labor, of love that you give to your family. Children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. It means this morning that children are a free gift of God, an inheritance, a vote for the future of your family. This inheritance from God has nothing to do with wealth, has nothing to do with property, has nothing to do with material response or re uh, possessions. Its value is far beyond uh, anything in this world this morning. Uh, don't miss this. Mothers produce the only being that will last forever. Did you hear that? Mom, you're the one that is creating something that will last forever. Mama, that baby that you're holding this morning is an eternal being. It will never, never pass away. It will never cease to exist. It will be around when everything else in this world has been discarded and decayed and gone. In other words, maybe this morning you feel like uh, you're not worth very much. You're holding that little one that just spit up all over you, blown out a diaper, thrown the bowl of cereal on the floor for the third time, you're worn out, you're worn out from lack of sleep. Uh, there's a things, a thousand things you've got to do. The kids are screaming and fighting. And you feel like you're in a rut. That's just a small part of describing motherhood this morning uh, from your perspective. But allow me to tell you this morning that those kids you're raising uh, will be around when all the GM's Cadillacs are rusted out, when all the Ford uh, company Lincolns uh, have been put on the scrap pile when all the world skyscrapers uh, have gone flat. Mama, motherhood was God's design for constantly growing a world and a developing a society this morning. Uh, every time a new life is brought into being, God as the creator is magnified. Uh, it's a vote for the future of your family. In Bible times, barrenness was the saddest plight of women. They were looked at as unproductive. Many felt like they were useless, of no value. Today, there's an alarming number of marriages that are childless, some because of natural causes, some by unnatural causes, such as contraceptives and abortions, Yet yeah, it's still true this morning that children are a gracious gift from God. And your influence in their lives goes far beyond uh, the basic child care services that you provide for them. President George Washington said, All I am I owe to my mother. I attribute all my success in life. to the moral, to the intellectual, to the physical education I received from my mother. President Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. President Andrew Jackson said, the memory of my mother and her teachings were after all the only capital I had to start life with. And on that capital, I have made my way. Prime Minister of England, Winston Churchill said, the greatest of all my teachers was my mother. Imagine the influences that are involved in these heads of state. 
the people that speak into their lives, people that have influences. Uh, that influence has come from all sections and segments of society. Uh, great leaders are developed by a variety of influences, but none greater in shaping the individuals and their viewpoint in life than their mothers. I don't think sometimes you realize how incredibly important you are and how much you add to society this morning. Your value cannot be calculated. That makes Christian mothers then the world's greatest asset and the world's greatest human influence. God uses mothers for the development of soul life of their children. That soul life part of that child it's the soul of a person this morning that will live forever, for all eternity. There's nothing on earth more permanent than your soul. Your body has limits, mortality, but not your soul. It never dies. The reason it's so important that you raise your child to know the Lord and have his word within their lives. My mother was a very devout Christian. I have two wonderful sisters who raised their families as my mother had raised them. Their children are believers in the Lord. My wife had a very devout mother, a Christian mother who raised my wife to know the Lord at a very young age. My wife in turn followed the her mother in raising our children in the Word of God. They never went to school without a word from the Bible or prayer. It's been a blessing to our home to have our children raised in that way. They've been good kids. They are serving the Lord and raising their own children uh, this morning in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. It's like this from one generation to another, the heritage and reward of the Lord that children are a gift from God, a vote for the future of your family and for the world and for society this morning. You know, the older I get, the more I realize that it's not about houses, lands, or possessions, or material things that makes life so sweet. It's the sounds of family going about their daily lives hearing about their hopes, their dreams, listening to their careers as it develops, watching them raise their own family, having them come over for Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, the holidays, we, we get together and watching them interact. Uh, there's nothing that can replace that, my friend. Those moments together with family are precious. Uh, we value them highly. Uh, we make the time and we make the focus on family being together because it's the one thing that gives more satisfaction uh, in life than anything else. It's been a joy to watch our granddaughter grow up in the motherhood, loving and caring for her two sons. Uh, we watch them on Facebook. They are stationed in Hawaii. We wanted to be over there with her second baby was born, but because of the coronavirus, uh, the quarantine and we restricted from going. You better believe that just as soon as this thing is lifted, we'll be there. But it's been a joy of watching uh, over FaceTime each and every day. We'll watch them and look at her doing life with those kids. To her, it's life to the max. Her hands are full. But both of those little boys, uh, uh, one is just finding himself very active and uh, energetic, got more energy than three people, than that little one who is totally dependent upon her in every way. And watching her handle them and grow into motherhood has been a, just a joy and a delight. Well, it's been life on max for her, life to the full, life uh, uh, that uh, sometimes is less than exciting for us as her grandparents. It takes us back to the times and those special day, days when we were raising our own children. You're talking about an inheritance. You're talking about a reward. 
We're living it every day. Thanking God for his goodness, his love, and his mercy to our family uh, that has allowed us to enjoy the blessings that surround us uh, uh, in our family and our children and our grandchildren, now our great-grandchildren. What a blessing. Uh, what a reward. What an inheritance. Uh, somebody had said one time that uh, the grandkids are uh, a reward for not killing your kids. Well, that's probably true uh, in, in many ways. Uh, Three things I, I would like to share, though, this morning uh, uh, with every young mother, and I wish they would keep in mind as they are going through the daily chores and going through all the uh, thousand things that they have to do and things that they have to take care of uh, on a daily basis. It seems sometimes endless. Uh, uh, sometimes seems like uh, it's... Uh, a never-ending chore to take care of those little ones. But I, I want to remind them this morning of three things particularly uh, this morning as, we, as it uh, relates to motherhood. First is that motherhood is a sacred calling. You get a call from no other agency on the face of the earth. To be a mother is not something simply biological or social function. The call to motherhood doesn't come from an appointment been set up, a human appointment. It's not from some government agency or from the ordination of a church. It's a gift from God himself, a vote for the future of that family. It's a tremendous honor and blessing to have God have enough faith in you and trust in you to grant it to you that little one that you're holding this morning. A woman, sacred calling to motherhood this morning comes from two unique powers that God has granted every mother. Not all women have this, but mothers do. First of all, you are biologically blessed. God has given you the marvelous and miraculous capacity to conceive and bear children. It's a wonderful, marvelous miracle that takes place in childbirth as you birth that little one into this world. You bring life. Sir, I tell you this morning, no matter how much lipstick you put on, you ain't gonna have no kids. You are not gonna bear no babies. That has been left to that mother who God has specially designed, uh, orchestrated in his divine uh, uh, movement of humanity to bless her with the ability to conceive, the ability to give birth to those little ones. She is so blessed. The second is that you're spiritually equipped this morning with a unique power to mold your children's character for time and for eternity. By speaking the word of God into their lives each and every day, all of us have learned first about love, about honesty, about integrity, about being obedient. We've learned faith. We've learned right from wrong. All through our mothers, when we was just at their footsteps, mama's powerful, good, that has extended to us and taken care of us, given us understanding of what it means to be good, and to serve and help and minister to others. Uh, it's the greatest power known on earth this morning. The second thing, not only is it a sacred calling this morning that you have, but motherhood this morning is an endangered calling. Never before in the history of our world this morning, of the human race, has there been so much against motherhood. More and more mothers, uh, whether out of choice or out of necessity, are leaving their motherly responsibilities to the care of somebody else. You know, care, child care is one of the multi-million dollar businesses that is growing by leaps and bounds uh, today. It's a trend that should cause uh, us to stop and think uh, about the consequences of that each and every day. Especially if you believe that no one can 
raise that little one as that natural mother can. That natural mother has the best interest of that kid. She's going to love and she's going to care for that little one better than anyone else. Nobody can love and care for them like you can, Mom. You're so special to them. There's three factors this morning making that trend to pass uh, the raising of our kids to somebody else. Three trends. Think of this now. Three trends that are making this happen impossible in our day and time. First of all, are ungrateful husbands. Husbands who don't have a clue the vital role of a mother. They lack appreciation for all that mother deals with day in and day out. Morning to night, through the night. Mothers understand this morning the routine Monday task. They understand the misbehavior of those children. They understand the long hours, the double duty, the low pay. They get it. They understand that very well. But what they have a hard time understanding this morning is the ungratefulness of a husband. They have a hard time being taken for granted. They have a hard time understanding the attitude that they are, are never tired or never supposed to be tired. Philosophy that sometimes the husband projects on them. And then sometimes it's that look when the husband comes in for work and gives her that look that says, what have you been done all day? Those things this morning is what discourages mothers. I wonder this morning if a veil was pulled back and God was to allow us to see what he sees and allow us to see as he compares the job of a husband and job of a mother how we compare I believe sometimes we'd be very surprised the second trend this morning that's taken mothers out of doing the responsibility of being a mother and passing on to somebody else is an economic necessity. Many mothers this morning wish that they could stay home. They wish they could care for the little one. They wish they could be that homemaker and do the motherly duties. Uh, but they can't. They have to work outside the home to pay the expenses uh, of a family that just needs the extra income. Those mothers don't deserve condemnation. They deserve our compassion. They deserve our prayers. They deserve this morning uh, our support. The third trend this morning, uh, and this one here is probably the most serious trend in our society today that is taking mothers out of the family and putting them in professional roles is the professional satisfaction that the world offers. I believe this one is the most serious factor of all of these three. The world lures many to the professional ranks with enticing offers of money, fame, fortune, prestige, admiration, recognition, all the different things that sometimes the world offers us. The problem is this morning is that the painful prevailing problems with a degenerated society that has left kids raising themselves on electronics, raising themselves in gangs, raising themselves on drugs. The third thing this morning for motherhood, not only is it a sacred call, not only is it an indispensable calling, uh, not only is it an endangered calling, but it's an indispensable calling. See, God has given the capacity to communicate to our children three vital qualities. First is faith and love. Nobody can give that child faith like you can. Paul was reminded of Timothy, how that his sincere faith came down from his mother and from his grandmother. 
that he was blessed and it just so blessed Paul to be able to see that sincere faith in this young lad that he was mentoring. Nobody can love you as deep as your mother. She loves you past all your physical imperfections. You could be the ugliest kid on the block. And yet mom would say, you look the best. You could strike out three times in the baseball game. And your mom would scream and say, you did good, you did good. Nobody can encourage you like mom. Nobody can be there in faith and love like she can. That's the second thing this morning is self-worth. Nobody can instill in you that of self-worth, self-esteem like mom. She believes in you when nobody else believes in you. She cares about you when nobody else will care about you. She'll feel your disappointments. She'll feel your hurt. She'll feel your pain. And she'll love you anyway. Through your mistakes, through your failures, through things that nobody else would give you a pass on. Mom. Mom would love you. The third is moral values. They're indispensable in this day and time as moral values in a day and time when they have seemed to go by the wayside. Mom is the one that knows how to instill those moral values in our lives. Uh, story of Hannah is given in 1 Samuel. Hannah was barren, praying every day very diligently for God to give her a child. One day in the tabernacle broken before the Lord, the priest heard a prayer. Promised her that God had heard that prayer. Well, Hannah conceived. The very next year when Elkanah, her husband, was getting ready to go back for the yearly sacrifice to the tabernacle, Hannah told him, says, honey, said, let me stay here. Let me take care of this child. Let me train him. Let me Encourage him. Let me speak to him the word of the Lord. Let him be trained him in the ways of the Lord. And when he's weaned, that wean goes further than just what we call wean today. Let me wean him. And then when he's weaned, I will take him to the tabernacle. I will present him to the Lord, and there he will serve the Lord the rest of his life. Hannah was good for her word. I can imagine it was all hard. Day she took him to the tabernacle. And that day she was to present him to the priest and said, Eli is yours. Let the Lord use him. Now, what you understand, the temple that day, the tabernacle that day, Eli was a good man, but his two sons was another story. But Hannah wasn't afraid to leave him. There, under the care and the nurture of the Lord. She knew she had raised him in the fear and the admonition of God. She knew that she had trained him. She knew that she had instilled him in the word of the Lord. She knew that she had planted in his young life uh, something that nobody could take away. Uh, uh, and as you look at Psalms, uh, Proverbs 22, 6, it's straight up old, child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it if you look at first samuel the second chapter verse nine in the middle of the song of thanksgiving back unto the lord for giving him giving her samuel she says he will keep the feet of his saints in other words she had no fear that god was able to keep uh, the same god who given her a child in her barrenness, the same God that she taught and believed in and raised him on uh, those years at home, uh, she knew that that same God was able to keep Samuel during those years that he would be serving the Lord away from her. Mama, your children are going to be in environments that will test what you have taught them. Put in their hearts, put into their lives, the word of the living God. Keep them lifted up in prayer. When all is said and done, God will bring them through. 
God will take care of them. When we have done our part, God promises to do his part. And he's always good for his word. I had the most wonderful, godly mother-in-law. The day that she left this world, the family was gathered around her bedside there in the hospital. It was a day that uh, we were reminiscing and praying and thanking the Lord for all that he'd done in the family that we had. It was a day that uh, it was just really, to tell you the truth, a worship service. There was no praying for a healing of cancer. We knew that God could heal her. There was no doubt in our mind that God could reach down the drop. It would be something we would love to have done. But that day, that moment, we were worshiping the Lord. It was a time of prayer. It was a time of just deep gratitude and appreciation for the lives that are gathered in that room together and what he had done in each one of our lives by faith. And bring them to, to him self. It was in that moment of prayer and singing the hymns that she loved so very much as we sung together. That the message in tongues and interpretation came. That this mother had been so faithful in reason, raising her kids in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. That the promise was given her, the reward of her faithfulness in that was that her children would be blessed down into the third and the fourth generation. There was a tremendous promise that day of God's faithfulness. We're living that moment. We're living that time today. We're seeing that happen on a daily basis as we've watched our children and grandchildren grow up and seeing them serve the Lord one with another. What a joy it has been to see the inheritance of this mom, to see the reward that she is receiving. I, I know she's seeing it from the other side. We're experiencing it on this side, but she's rejoicing on the other. We're seeing that fulfillment today in the lives of each one. I want you this morning, mom, to know that you're living a legacy. You're leaving the story behind. Why not let it be a godly one? Why not let it be an anointed one? Why not let it be a legacy of a mom who not only knew God, but a mom who knew how to pass her faith down into the next generation, to the next generation, into the next generation? What a privilege it is to serve the Lord. Do you know Him? Do you know the Lord this morning? Have you really made a commitment to him to serve him? Your kids need him. Your family needs him. You need him. If you don't know the Lord this morning, I'm going to pray with you. Why don't you ask the Lord today to come into your heart and your life so that in years to come, you can not only pass down a legacy, that you can pass down a testimony of faith of what God has done to your family that will go from one generation to another. You see, I believe that the reason uh, God granted you the privilege of a sacred calling, of motherhood, it was a vote for you and for your future and for your family and for our society this morning. Why don't you trust him today? Not only as your Lord and Savior, but the keeper of your family. Would you pray with me? Father, this morning, what a privilege. What a privilege this morning to have brought a word of hope, a word of instruction, a word of faith this morning, and the divine care of a God who loves mothers this morning. Whether it's that one this morning has got spit up all over, that one this morning that is feeling like she has no way to go but a thousand things to do, would you just touch her this morning? Would you just encourage her? Would you just lift her up? Would you just give her hopes? For that one that doesn't know you, this one letter this morning right now invites you into her.